There's been a lot of vulnerabilities hitting Intel these days, and one of them is called zombie load. And a way to prevent that is to disable hyperthreading. Now, I can go ahead and show you guys the difference on an i9-9900K base system with an RTX 2080. But I don't think it'll make that much of a difference. What's more interesting to me is something such as this laptop. This laptop has a quad-core i7 Extreme and dual 680Ms and SLI. I think this represents the market better than this. So why don't we take a look and see exactly how this laptop performs with and without hyper-threading. Looking at the Steam hardware survey, we see that four CPUs is the dominant out of everything. Next up is two CPUs, which is really interesting. As for the GPU, we have the 1060 as the most common and 1050 Ti as the second most common. This is the reason I'm choosing my older Alienware laptop because the 680M SLI is right in between a 1060 and a 1050 Ti. And the i7 quad core extreme should represent pretty close to what you get with most quad cores these days. So I've gone ahead and overclocked the CPU to 4.2 GHz on all cores to kind of eliminate the generational bottleneck since this is a third generation i7 Extreme. And as you can see we have 4 cores, 8 threads. So let's go ahead and start off with Cinebench. So we've got a score of 748 in Cinebench 15 with hyper-threading enabled. So next we're going to run Firestrike and we're going to take a look at the physics score in general, but we'll also look at GPU score to see if it was affected in any way by the CPU. So this will be with hyper-threading enabled. Alright, so in Firestrike we've got 10,976 for physics, 10,734 graphics, and 3,092 combined, with a 8629 total. Next we're going to try out Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So I've gone ahead in the BIOS and turned off hyperthreading, and as you can see we have only 4 cores showing up with no extra 4 threads. So let's go ahead and see the difference in performance. Alright, I've gone ahead and started the render. Let's see how well this does. The one good thing about this laptop is it will not thermal throttle or power throttle at all. It's going to stay at 4.2 GHz throughout the whole render just like it did last time, which is great for consistency results. Alright, so in the video rendering test, we got 10 minutes and 26 seconds with hyperthreading, and without hyperthreading, we got 12 minutes and 5 seconds. That's about a 15 to 16% difference in speed without hyperthreading. I expected this because rendering normally takes use of the extra threads, so this is not too much of a surprise to me. Last time in Cinebench we got 748. Let's see what we score without that hyperthreading. So we scored 581. That is about 29% difference without hyperthreading. And this test shows what a perfectly optimized program would suffer from without hyperthreading. This is more like the worst case scenario. So you could expect up to probably a max of 30% performance decrease by turning off hyperthreading depending on the program. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at Firestrike again. All right, so the results are in. We got 7,782 physics score. That is a decrease of 41%. The graphics score is 10,851, which is an increase of 1%. I'd say it's within error. Combined score is so close, it's within error. The overall is 8277. That's 4% less than before. I was actually quite shocked at this physics score. That is quite the drop. So, so far, 41% is the highest that we've seen 
in these tests so far. So let's go ahead and switch to the gaming section and see if we see any differences there. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was a little interesting. So we have hyper threading and no hyper threading and both of them got 31 FPS average. Even though the no hyper threading got a few more frames rendered, but what's interesting is when you look at the table down here. The minimum FPS was 65 for no hyper threading and 59 for hyper threading. But the maximum and the average was higher on the hyper threading. 132 high, 128 high, 100 average high, and 91 average on the no hyper threading. So the CPU is definitely doing better with hyper threading, but the FPS overall with the GPU was around the same. And this is most likely due to my really old 680M SLI. But in this case, we can say there really wasn't much of a difference. So this is where things get a bit interesting. In CSGO, we got 225 FPS with hyperthreading and 205 without hyperthreading. So that is about a 10% increase with hyperthreading. For Battlefield 1, we got 107 FPS with hyperthreading and 91 FPS without hyperthreading. So an 18% increase with hyperthreading. Now what's interesting about Battlefield 1 was I saw the CPU spike up to about 98% usage. So we were starting to hit a CPU bottleneck. But on average, it was around 80 to 90% usage. With hyperthreading, I normally saw it in the low 70s most of the time for the CPU usage. So that kind of adds up. So in conclusion, hyperthreading does make a difference. In gaming, we saw a 14% increase with hyperthreading, but if you count the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, then it would be around 10%. In rendering, we saw about 16% improvement. In benchmarking, we saw 34% increase. And if we average all these numbers out, we got about 20% average increase with hyperthreading. Apple said, I think it was around 40% of a performance loss, and Intel said around 7%. So this is definitely much higher than Intel's assumption or claim. And it's about half of Apple's. So I'm not sure how they're getting those numbers, but we've seen both those numbers actually, if you think about it. Apple's 40% claim we did kind of reach with Firestrike, and for, for Intel, I didn't really get 7% increase, I did get 10% in Counter-Strike, so I'm not sure how they're getting that number either. But in general, hyper-threading does make a difference, especially on an older system like this. If you have a quad core with 8 threads, hyper-threading will definitely make a difference. However, if you have a newer 6 core or 8 core CPU, I don't think it will affect you as much. If you guys really want to see that test, I can do it with my i9-900K over here. So let me know in the comments if you guys care about that. But there are some other videos I believe on YouTube that probably already have done this. If not, then I can do it. But this definitely will affect people with quad cores. And if someone's still using dual core with hyperthreading, it will affect you probably even more. But 6 and 8 cores, or even higher than that, I don't think you'll really get much of a decrease. So definitely leave hyperthreading on if you need it. But if you don't, you can turn it off. It's really bad for Intel to have all these vulnerabilities, but it's uh, something that we gotta deal with. So thanks for watching, and as always, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.